Hello YouTube, what is up? Uh, this is VMonkeyFX back with another After Effects tutorial. Uh, first time in forever I've done this. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, you know, summer was kind of hectic. Uh, school, homework, and stuff. But trying to get back in the swing of things. And today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to make this effect. Which I forgot to do a RAM preview of it beforehand. So I'm just going to preview it now. You know pretty sick given that this was completely done CG. No actual footage except for still pictures. So you know that's pretty cool. No animated clouds, nothing like that. It's all legit PC. So I'm gonna go ahead and to do this I'm gonna create a new composition and we're gonna go ahead and make a new solid. It really doesn't matter what color it is. And over in your effects and presets panel it may take a while to load type in the word ramp and then drag that onto your solid now for the we want it to look sort of like a sky and right now we're just making sort of a, a basic background and in order to make this look really good you have to have a basic understanding of how cloud layering works in the atmosphere and how you know you got your cumulus over here and you got your cirrus running through the top of the sky but I didn't add cirrus for this one. I just have cumulative clouds, like the puffy ones, because um, our camera, when it pans, it doesn't really go over the line where you would see cirrus clouds. Maybe a little, but it's only a few frames, so I figured, you know, we don't need to add cirrus clouds. Um, if you want to add cirrus clouds, you can probably get, like, some really, really big image of a lot of cirrus clouds. Or like take one yourself somehow. And then just like sort of arrange it so that it would be facing down. Uh, I'll explain it a little later when we get into the 3D stuff. But to start off, we're just going to make the basic um, ramp that you see in the sky. And so then for this color right here, we're going to choose sort of a desaturated bluish, grayish. And then we're going to choose more of a dark blue, bright dark bluish, like that for the top. And then we can move the ramp a little bit around to make it seem just a little bit more random. And I think that's looking okay. So we have our ramp, and now we're going to go ahead and get... I'll be posting the project for this along with the uh, stock footage. And we're going to get a picture of either the jet underscore side dot JPEG or the jet rear. I'm going to be using the jet rear because it's a little bit more easy to animate. And as you can see, it's a pretty high definition picture. Um, it's pretty high quality. You know, not the best, but it's pretty good. Especially since uh, I didn't have to pay for it. Um, next thing you're going to want to get is, open up, a mask, just a basic mask, and then feather, like, I have a lot of different masks for this one. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and do the individual masking, because that's going to take forever, but, um, once you get done masking it, feather it by two pixels. Alright, so that that's probably going to take you a good... 10 to 20 minutes to mask out the plane, but um, it's a pretty decent effect. So anyway, I, let's see, do I already have, I'm going to delete this, and then I'm going to drag in our jet underscore rear composition, and as you can see, yeah, <laughs> it, it's a jet that's very terribly masked but given that it will be in a similar background that it is in this picture I don't know if you can see that we don't really need to do such an amazing job of masking it because we're also going to be adding some motion blur and you're not going to be able to see these harsh outlines so I'm going to delete that for now, but we will be needing that later. And you're going to go ahead and import clouds of your choice. I thought clouds 2 and 1 were the best because they had the highest resolutions and they looked better to me. 
So I'm going to be using those. Now you're going to notice that these are not pre-keyed clouds. I'm sorry about that. I could not find any, but uh, there's an easy fix. You just go ahead to the transfer mode and set it to screen. It may not look the best right now, but it's um, when it's all said and done, it's actually going to look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just use cloud two for the moment. Scale it down a bit. And to start off, we're just going to get our outline for where we're going to be placing our clouds. So I'm going to, in fact, yeah, I'll use cloud two. What the heck? We're going to position it, uh, turn on, make it 3D, scale it up to 100%. And we're going to position it backwards. Come on, you can do it. Let's go quite a bit out. You know, I'm going to speed up the process. I'm going to set to like 9,000. That's a pretty good distance. And now if we create a new camera, you got to kind of screw around with this because, um, let's see here. Is that the right distance? That seems about right. And then we're just going to scale this down just a little bit. And now we're going to apply over on the effects and presets panel, Repetile. R-E-P-E-T-I-L-E. -E -E. And no, that's not Reptile, that's Repetile. So we're going to drag that onto our clouds, expand right, pull that up, and we're going to set this to unfold. We're just going to bring it out a lot <laughs> uh, I'll set this to like 8,000 and then expand left we'll set that to like 8,002 and that looks pretty good now we have these harsh edges here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rectangle tool and we're going to mask something like this. And then we can move around these points so that we get sort of the center of the clouds. And then we hit F on the mask to feather it out. And we'll just bump that up. And then you're going to have to screw around with the points, like I said. And then we wait for it to load. There we go. Now, you're going to want to probably add another point in here or something. And then we can just... Whoa, this is some laggy. This is some lag. Selecting your mask, you're going to want to add another point. There we go. That's what I wanted and make it look a little bit something like that to the point where it's sort of feathered out but we can still make out some of the detail and I'm thinking that's pretty good we're gonna duplicate that and then we're gonna bring that in a bit in not out in there we go and maybe move that down so you just like a basic starting point for these clouds and yeah guys this is going to be very slow it's um unless you have like a godly pc this is probably going to be a pretty laggy development because after effects isn't made to take on any of this 3d stuff really it's made for more uh just 3d intros and things so i think i'll just bring that in a little bit more like that let's go there we go and that's looking pretty good to me for my standards so we have a basic 3d environment now i'm gonna drag in another one of these i think i'll go with a cloud two this time 
and we'll set that to screen make another 3d layer rotate it actually not that way there we go that's what I wanted and now we can position this sort of like that something come on you can do it you know what? I'm going to uh turn my resolution down from full to like third so that I can get a little bit better yeah that's better that's a lot better oh my god okay so I'm going to just screw around with some of the settings rotated a bit um, if you get one of these harsh edges, don't be afraid to go in there with the mask again. And, oh, that's not what I meant. And we'll go ahead and feather that out again. So yeah, all in all, it's pretty simple. You're just going to layer out your clouds like this. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording for a little bit. But um, when I come back, we're actually going to be working on animating the camera and the plane. All right, guys, I'm back. As you can see, this is not uh, this is not the same project. I kind of went in and cheated. I went to my old project because I found it a bit difficult and time-consuming to do it again. But um, yeah, you guys, you just got to spend some time doing it like cloud two is not the best for putting one on the left you should probably use like cloud one for putting something on the left that's just a suggestion and then on right use cloud two so that's something i kind of discovered works out better uh you can use cloud three four and five for all i really care but uh i just stuck with clouds one and two anyway now that we got that we're going to now animate the camera and this part is interesting because you kind of want it to follow the path of the jet but you don't really know where the jet is going to go yet so um, you just gotta kinda wing it on this part so make keyframe for the position on your camera which you might wanna create a camera just saying if you're gonna be animating the position you might wanna make a camera and then you're going to bring the camera forward. As you can see, we get this really cool sort of parallax of the clouds. And probably move the camera sort of pointing. You're going to work. There we go. Port, yeah, pointing forward instead of down. Come on, let's go. There we go. That's nice and fluid. And you might want to rotate it a little bit more side to side. Maybe not. That's looking pretty good to me. Nice and fluid. Come on, you can do it. Okay, so now we're going to import our... That's pretty much it for the camera. It's going to be nice and short, just like half a second. And we're going to import our jet rear composition that we made into a mask earlier. Which, I'll just go ahead and delete that. Go ahead and import that. And let's, let's make this a 3D layer. Rotate it a little bit so that it's facing the camera. Something like that. And then we'll drag the position back just a little bit. Hit P for position. Come on. You can do this. There we go. Now we can drag it up a bit. We kind of want it to come like through the camera. 
So sort of move it off to the right. Something like this. I'm sorry guys, this is just taking forever for my computer to work because it's running with Cam Studio and Audacity, so it's kind of slow moving. Alright, we're going to call that good. I'm not getting very good FPS at all with this. Come on, you can do this. That's right. And to start off, let's make the starter position sort of... Like that. And then we'll make a keyframe. And over the course of that half a second, just drag it forward like all the way. Then you might try rotating it a bit for more realism. Come on, let's go. Set that to like 4,000, I think. That should be decent. And then we'll move this over. Like, up a bit. That looks like a decent position. I'm not going to screw with it anymore. Except I might actually rotate it just a little bit. I didn't do that before, but I think I might try that now. Z rotation and Z rotation, right? No. I, there we go. X rotation. And now we'll bring it forward. And keyframe that. So it looks like it's turning just a little bit. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and enable motion blur. And this is the part where it actually gets to lag, because it wasn't lagging before for me, so I have no idea what happened. But, um, yeah. That's the last major thing. Other things you can do to make it look a little bit nicer is... Um, you can tell sort of that it just looks kind of cheesy. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, there's a lot of blue showing, and it just looks kind of cruddy and plain. So you can add an adjustment layer, give it sort of a greenish tint. In my opinion, that makes it look a little better, look a little bit more realistic. Um, it's really your personal preference. Yeah, you can add, like, a slight glow or something, I guess. Just uh, a couple different effects to touch it up. I don't know, I'll see how glow looks, though. I'm kind of interested. Bad idea. I'm going to undo that. Cam, yeah, Cam Studio is not your friend. This is I think that's looking pretty good. So anyway, yeah, guys, then you you can like screw around with the adjustment layer, uh add a mask to it, subtract the mask, feather it out, screw around with that kind of stuff. But um another thing I should probably talk about is that getting the right footage for your plane because you don't want a plane that's sitting on the ground for your footage. Because notice on this plane how it's sort of lit all around. Just a little bit less so on the bottom. But with a plane that's sitting on the ground, like with this one, it's really heavily shaded on the bottom. And it's not letting me see. Because my resolution sucks. 
So yeah, as you can tell, it's really heavily shaded on the bottom, and you've got the landing gear that you got to work with and get out of the picture. So I would suggest trying to find some stock footage of a plane that's actually in the sky, because then you got this weird lighting off the ground, like up by the nose, you can see that, and just the shadowing, and it just looks completely derpy for being put in the sky. So uh, that's the last thing I'm going to really say about this, is make sure that you get some footage of it in the sky. That's pretty important. But uh, other than that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, next tutorial, I might be continuing this depending on the kind of uh, likes and comments that I get on this video. I might be doing one where the plane like crashes into a building or something. But I feel kind of like a dick doing that because it's September and, you know, September 11th. I might just do that some other time actually now that I think about it. But um, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, uh, found it helpful. If you liked it, please give me a comment, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You know the drill. But yeah, thanks for watching the video guys, and I'll see you next time.